beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God's word for today has Jesus asking a very dramatic question. But his response to this question is even more dramatic. Today's reading is found in the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 51. And I want to ask if you're able to rise out of respect for this wonderful word of God. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. Please be seated. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? I would imagine if we had heard Jesus ask this question, we would have not expected the answer he gave. Because it's a real startling answer. It's very unexpected. And I would even say it sounds quite disturbing. I know I wouldn't have given the answer he gave. On the contrary, I would have answered in a more inspiring and reassuring manner. And in doing so, I would have had solid scriptural reference to back me up. What do I mean? Well, first off, the implication that Jesus is undoubtedly linked with peace is declared by his very name. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. And the angels at his birth declared peace on earth, goodwill towards men. And there are many other texts from the lips of Jesus found within the Bible to back this up. As example, Jesus says in Luke 10:5. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And in Luke 7, 50 it reads, And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And Luke 8, 48 reads, And he said to her daughter, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. So it's clear that Jesus used the comforting words, go in peace, to many troubled souls throughout his entire ministry. And he further affirmed these same words with all finality by the legacy he left us when he went away. John 14, 27 reads, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And even after his resurrection, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, Christ stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. But in spite of these many incidents, and in spite of numerous others asserting Christ as the man of peace, he himself answers his own question by the emphatic denial found in our text today. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No. I tell you, but rather division. These are tough words. And if we cross-reference the gospel and look into the gospel of Matthew, he uses even stronger and more robust wording to emphasize this point. Matthew 10.34 reads, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And this allusion to a sword symbolizes battle. It symbolizes conflict and confrontation. So yes, these words of Jesus from God's word today are very dramatic. Words that most surely must be explained. When Jesus declared that he came to cause conflict and division, he was speaking a very sober truth. In fact, Jesus was the most dividing personality that ever walked this earth. The Bible tells us that anywhere Christ traveled, he stirred up the people, and wherever Jesus was, debates and arguments ensued when he engaged individuals in conversation. John 7:43 reads, so there was a division among the people over him. So the, so the Bible reminds us quite clearly that the name of Jesus causes disunion 
and division. But just why was Jesus so controversial in the first place? And why is Jesus still so controversial now? What makes Christ the great divider and why is there no middle ground when it comes to Jesus? Well, there are a number of reasons. But first and foremost, there is no middle ground when it comes to Jesus Christ because of what he told and taught his followers. You see, loved ones, Jesus taught quite clearly that he alone is man's only way to God and God's only way to man. John 14, 6 reads, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And 1 John 2, 2 reads, He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. These two verses are but a sampling of what is found all throughout Scripture related to Jesus being the only way to God. The Bible teaches the truth that faith in Christ is the only appeasement and the only satisfaction that is acceptable to God the Father for the sins of every single human being that has ever lived. The Bible teaches quite forcefully that there is no other way to God the Father except through Christ the Son. And this is a problem, isn't it? In fact, this has always been a problem in this world. You see, this teaching, this teaching has always been an uncomfortable and inconvenient truth. One that will disturb and disrupt because there is no alternative to salvation. Because according to the teachings of Christianity, there is no middle ground when it comes to our rescue and our deliverance from our sin. There is no middle ground when it comes to Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven and eternal happiness with God. But the problem is, that people throughout the ages have devised many different ways to come to God. In our world there are numerous religions which conflict and fight with the Bible's clear teaching that salvation comes only through Jesus Christ and Him crucified for sin. And this, my friends, causes division. And so many people have invented the great lie and think that they, in their own goodness, do not need a savior. They are simply not interested at all in submitting their lives to Jesus Christ as the only way to be saved. But loved ones, Jesus taught that no matter what we do, no matter how good we may think we are, no matter what we may believe about ourselves, we can never save ourselves. Because it is the cross alone that saves. You see, I cannot in any way, shape, or form earn my salvation, no matter how hard I try. Jesus died and rose again to give me salvation apart from anything, any work that I might be able to do. And because of my complete and utter sinfulness. I can never on my own please God the Father who is 100% holy and can't stand sin because it is only the cross of Christ and his shed blood upon it that makes me acceptable to God. 1 Timothy 2.5 reads, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. But the real problem is that man does not like to think of himself as a sinner. He would much rather think that within himself he has what is necessary to earn his way to God and heaven by his own goodness and his own self-righteousness. And that is why the cross of Jesus Christ causes such intense, deep division. That is why the cross of Christ divides people into two camps, those who suffer for Christ 
those who carry their cross for Christ, those who surrender and commit their lives to Jesus, and those who will not. But there is no middle ground when it comes to Jesus and his rule. Jesus is the only way. A person either stands with him or against him. And he himself made that very clear. Matthew 12, 30 reads, Whoever is not with me is against me. Now that means, my friends, there's no middle, there's no middle road here. You can't have it both ways. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. And this, loved ones, is exactly why Jesus Christ causes such division among people because it is a very disturbing thing. Christianity is disturbing for anyone outside of Christianity to be, to be told that there is no other way to God the Father apart from Christ His Son. People don't want to hear that. And in Christ's own day, His own people murdered Him for saying it. Jesus taught that life is meant to be lived only one way. He taught that life is rich only when life is spiritual in Him. But this thought always causes division. And think about it. Today people are working their fingers to the bone for material advantage. The S in success is spelled with a dollar sign. No one wants to hear the words of Christ that declare He is the bread of life. No one wants to hear the words of Christ not to selfishly store up treasures on earth if one's sole objective in life is focused and fixated on material things and gain. But loved ones, we are not to live by bread alone. We are to live our lives centered on Christ with our eyes fixed on Jesus. Jesus also taught the fundamental value that each and every person is to be treated the same. Christ taught quite plainly there is to be no cultural divide. Jesus made it clear that we are to be lovers of all people. He told us to love our neighbors as ourselves. But look at the mess in our world today. Undoubtedly there are many who do not try to love their neighbor. And this core teaching of Christ causes considerable division among many. But it is particularly disturbing on the individual level, even among some Christians, that we see so much hatred and disdain for others. But my friends, hatred for anyone is anti-God. We can't hate others and say we and profess to love God. It is clearly against the teachings of Jesus. And doing so only causes division. The Bible also shows us that there is no middle ground when it comes to Jesus because of what he is. Jesus Christ is the righteous, holy, divine Son of God. Jesus is the only way. He is the only truth, and He alone is life. And it is this statement that causes the most controversy and division in this world. You see, claiming that Jesus alone offers eternal life causes so much disunion among people. Look at all the inner faith practices that are applauded now. And we're talking inner faith, not, not denominational. We're talking inner faith. All these things that are plotted now. And perhaps you may think on the surface, well, what's wrong with looking for commonalities, Pastor? Should we not try to be together in unity with those of other beliefs? Well, of course. Of course we should try to get along with everyone because we are to love our neighbor. But striving to love our neighbor means only one thing, my friends. 
Christians show true love for others only one way. And that is when we witness to them and share the message of truth that Christ alone came to save and that only Christ alone can save. And loved ones, if we fail to do that as Christians, we not only violate Christ's command, but we do not love our neighbor as ourselves. But most importantly, if Christ is the only way to life eternal, that means that every other religion in this world is false. And every other religion leads only one place, to hell. But that is what the Bible teaches. And that is what those who belong to Christ must believe. And that is why we, you and I, are to share the gospel good news message that Christ alone saves. Life will never be what it is meant to be until each of our lives try to imitate the life of Jesus Christ. We are not to invent a way of life. We are intended to imitate Christ's way of life. And it is in this way that Jesus divides us. You see, when we openly and honestly face Jesus, we see just how far away we are from him. And when we see what Christ is really like and know in our own hearts what we are really like, we see a contrast that is great. And we see a great need. But loved ones, Christ does not want us to be divided. He desires that we are united with him and that we imitate him in our Christian lives. This means that we who are Christians are to be his witnesses. We who are Christians are to share his gospel. We who are Christians are to mirror the love of Jesus in everything we do. But doing so will cause division. It will cause conflict as Christ has said. But you and I are to try to be what Jesus was. The question is, are we? My friends, you and I live in a controversial, divisive, insanely politically corrected world. And because of this, Jesus Christ will always be a cause for division. But as followers of Christ, we cannot let that or anything else detour us from sharing his message of truth with this divided world. When Jesus said that he had come not for peace but for division, he was saying had he not come, this earth would have gone on undisturbed in all of its sinfulness until its final destruction. But Jesus did come. He came to take away humanity's sin and guilt. And for those who believe and trust in him, he nailed their sin and guilt to the cross. When Christ came to redeem the world, his coming caused much division because many refused to have their sinfulness and shame removed by the cross. And sadly for so many, that is the way it will always be. The Bible teaches that you are either for Christ or you are against Christ. There is no middle ground. Today I ask you to take your stand with Christ. Stake your life on Him 
and follow him all the way. Loved ones, the controversies and divisions of this world will rage until Jesus again returns. We have but one message, and that is that Jesus is the only way to life eternal with God in heaven. Let Jesus be your Redeemer. Let Jesus be your Savior. Because in the great division of ideas about him will come the real and only peace for the human heart. Glorious Heavenly Father, thank you for your words today, Lord. Give boldness, give strength to those who are here today and for all who hear my voice to share your message of salvation with those who do not yet know you. To be bold, to be strong, and to go with you all the way. In your son's name I ask these things. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.